Scientists dedicate their lives to uncovering the weird and wonderful mysteries of our world. Sometimes this hard work pays off, and centuries-old mysteries finally have a conclusion. But it appears that not all mysteries are meant to be solved. Number 5 In October of 1954, Florence, Italy found itself at the center of one of the greatest historical mysteries of all time when they were possibly visited by aliens. The events of that day have continued to baffle experts and residents and remain highly debated and talked about to this day. On October 27, 1954, football fans filed into the stadium and a buzz of excitement filled the air. Fans were getting ready to watch their team take on their opponent and as the first whistle blew and the first kick was made, the fans knew they were in for an exciting game. Everyone in the stadium got far more than they bargained for though. As the first half went on, cheers and shouts erupted from the stands, with fans cheering on their side and celebrating goals. Then it was halftime. People buzzed around grabbing refreshments and hastily making their way to their seats to enjoy the second half. Just as the whistle blew, the lively stadium fell silent. It wasn't just the fans who stopped either. The players looked up into the sky and saw something bizarre floating overhead. One player told the BBC, quote, I remember everything from A to Z. It was something that looked like an egg that was moving slowly, slowly, slowly. Everyone was looking up and also there was some glitter coming down from the sky, silver glitter. Everyone stared into the sky as the bizarre object floated by. Whispers quickly began to spread around the stadium that what they were witnessing was a UFO and the game was quickly suspended. Other people reported seeing several objects in the sky that day, claiming that they were cigar shaped and moving quickly. There were also UFO sightings reported across Tuscany too. Had the people of Tuscany been visited by a UFO or several UFOs that day? Later, after the UFOs had passed, a white, fluffy substance was found on wood just outside of the city, although scientists were unable to determine its origin. This only fueled speculation that Florence had been visited by aliens that brisk October day. Each year, as the anniversary approaches, those who were there remember and reflect on what they saw that day. Almost 68 years later, scientists are still trying to come up with an explanation for what happened. Do you think the people of Florence were visited by a UFO? Number 4 Dighton Rock has been a hot talking point for many centuries now, and despite hundreds of scientists and experts being called to examine it, we're still no closer to discovering the truth. The first recorded mention of the Dighton Rock was in 1690 when John Danforth wrote about the mysterious rock that he discovered in Dighton, Massachusetts in the Taunton River. This rock weighs 40 tons and is 5 feet high and 11 feet long, making it hard to miss. It's not the size that drew attention though, but the bizarre carvings and drawings that have been etched onto its surface. Danforth made a drawing of what he saw on the rocks. However, he failed to note the drawings on the lower half of the rock because it was submerged deep into the river. News quickly spread and people became incredibly interested in the rock. Everyone had their different ideas and theories as to who had created the rock and how it had ended up in the river. One theory was that the rock was a writing rock used by the Native Americans. Other people took this rock and its bizarre drawings as a sign that extraterrestrial life had visited Earth leaving behind cryptic clues. Theories ranged from the Portuguese, Chinese, and Japanese being responsible as the years passed. Experts never came any closer to a definitive answer. While scientists and historians debated the origins of the rock drawings, nature took its course, eroding the rock away as it lay in the Taunton River. Each year, people would flock to Dighton Rock, hoping to get a glimpse of the bizarre drawings and believing they may be able to crack the code. By 1963, the rock was officially removed from the river during a dam construction. Scientists wanted to place the rock into a museum to preserve it for future generations and to get a better look at it. 
The Dighton Rock now lives in a small museum in Dighton Rock State Park in Berkeley, Massachusetts, and experts are still desperately trying to figure out the source of the drawings. Are these really alien sketchings left behind, or are these from an old human civilization? Number 3 in 1973, a bizarre conspiracy theory popped up that would bring into question everything we know about our world and the galaxy around it. This theory puts forward the idea that a Black Knight satellite, an extraterrestrial craft, has been orbiting the Earth for 13,000 years. In 1998, NASA captured a strange object orbiting the Earth, which only added fuel to the fire of this theory. Those who believe in the Black Knight satellite's existence also note that the late and great Nikola Tesla picked up strange radio transmissions in his laboratory. In 1889, Tesla received these radio transmissions while he was conducting an experiment into radio signals from the universe. And while he wasn't expecting to find much, he came across a gold mine. According to sources, Tesla expressed these radio waves into code, stating that they most likely came from highly intelligent beings on Mars. But others think that these waves were actually aliens making contact with Earth. To add to the theory that there's a dark, mysterious object orbiting the Earth, in February of 1960, the US Navy saw something strange on their radars. They described it as a dark, tumbling object. The Pentagon refuted this, stating that it was simply a satellite, but believers in the Black Knight satellite are convinced that the US government is trying to cover up its existence. Countless other sightings of mysterious debris have been made over the years, with NASA stating that they are remnants of satellites that no longer function, or space debris, but some people aren't convinced. Are NASA and the government using extraterrestrial technology to spy on the people of Earth? NASA has confirmed several times that the black mass spotted in 1998 was nothing more than a loose thermal tether that later burned up in the atmosphere after escaping again. But that hasn't stopped people believing that something more sinister is happening just above the atmosphere. Number 2 The Fistus Disc has remained one of the greatest historical mysteries until now. The disc was first discovered in 1908 in Greece, and its discovery rocked the scientific and historical worlds. The clay disc is only around 15 centimeters in diameter, but the small disc packs an impressive punch with mysterious symbols stamped around the sides. When the disc was first discovered, experts rushed to decode the disc, but quickly realized that the language and pictures were indecipherable. All they could discern was that the disc was over 4,000 years old and dated back to 1700 BC to the time of a Minoan civilization. With over 45 distinct pictures that had never been seen before, experts were extremely excited by this find and what secrets it may reveal about the ancient Minoan civilization. The disc was examined by archaeologists who determined that it was a genuine artifact and not an attempt to get money and fame. But no matter how hard people worked, they couldn't figure out what the disc said, or what its relevance was. The symbols and pictures had been pressed into the soft clay, which was then fired to seal them in, giving historians a good idea of how Minoans worked and operated. Still, even with this information, experts struggled to decipher the disc. That was until Dr. Gareth Owens of the Technical University of Crete stepped in. According to Dr. Owens, he had been studying the disc since the 1990s, after moving to the island of Crete. Dr. Owens devoted his life and academic career to cracking the code of the Festus disc, and that finally paid off over 25 years after he had begun his research. In conjunction with Professor John Coleman from the University of Oxford, the two set about comparing the symbols on the disc to other languages. After years of research, Dr. Owens was proud to announce that he'd solved one of history's greatest mysteries, and reported that he had deciphered 99% of the Phaestos disc. Dr. Owens told the Greek media that the Phaestos disc contained passages about a pregnant goddess, revealing ancient religious texts and scriptures. Number 1 
1995, the MV Joyeta and her crew set sail from Western Samoa, never to return again. The crew on board had no idea that this trip would be their last, and for the past 67 years, experts have desperately been trying to piece together one of the darkest historical mysteries. On October 3, 1955, the MV Joyeta left Western Samoa, headed for the Tokelau Islands, some 290 miles away. The boat carried medical supplies, food, water, and empty oil drums, along with 16 members of the crew and nine passengers. One of the passengers, Alfred Dennis Parsons, was a doctor who comforted everyone on board, knowing that should any medical incident arise, they were in good hands. But two days later, something bizarre happened. When the MV Joyda failed to arrive and dock up as expected, the alarm was raised. The journey should have taken two days at most, and when the third day came and went and there was no sign of the ship, people knew that something was very wrong. Search and rescue teams set off into the Pacific Ocean, looking for any sign of the MV Joyeta. At first, search crews found no sign of the boat. It wasn't until they ventured over 1,000 miles off course that they found the boat, on its side, with broken windows and in a state of disrepair. The contents of the ship painted a grim picture. Used bandages were found on board, suggesting that at least two people had been injured during the short trip. The search and rescue crew who entered the boat also found that the lights were on and the radio was tuned to 2882 kilohertz, the international distress signal. The three lifeboats were missing and there was no sign of the crew of the MV Joyeta or its passengers. A further search of the seas showed no signs of passengers, and no matter how hard search and rescue teams looked, no one on board the MV Joyeta was ever found. Even to this day, Experts are still searching for answers to what happened aboard the MV Joyeta and what happened to its crew. How did the ship veer 1,000 miles off course? And where were the crew and its passengers? One theory is that pirates boarded the ship and forced everyone onto lifeboats, but there's no evidence to prove any of these theories. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But I've been Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.